Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at a proof of the law of cosines. In particular I want to prove that a squared plus b squared minus 2 times ab cosine theta equals c squared when we have some triangle abc with side lengths lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c. And also angle theta at vertex c. So now, to, before we get started, let's take a look at what we're going to need. We need the definition of trigonometric functions. In particular, we need sine theta and cosine theta. Also, we're going to need the Pythagorean theorem. And the fact that we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared when we have two legs of the right triangle a and b and the hypotenuse c. So now, what else are we going to need? We need the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So now, to get started, let's look at this angle theta. The goal is going to be to encase theta. So let's go ahead and isolate the point B, and we'll call it x1, y1. So now, we've been plotting points for so long that sometimes we forget how we actually get there, or the process that goes on when we do plot this point. But we're going a horizontal distance of x1, and now we're going a vertical distance, y1. So this horizontal leg, we can label x1, and this one we could call y1. Keep in mind this creates a right angle when we plot points along the Cartesian plane. That's how the points are defined, as rectangular coordinates. So now what we need to do is, well let's go ahead and label this new vertex here. We'll call this vertex D. That way we can name our two right triangles. We have right triangle BCD and we have right triangle ABD. So now what do we want to do? We want to rename x1 and y1 in terms of sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and look at the cosine of angle theta. But keep in mind that cosine of angle theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side to angle theta is x1 and the hypotenuse in this case is lowercase a. So now we do the same thing with sine theta. We have that sine theta is equal to the opposite side of the right triangle divided by the hypotenuse. So we have opposite of theta is y1 divided by the hypotenuse a. But now we want to solve for x1 and y1. So let's go ahead and write this as cosine theta over 1 and sine theta over 1. So now when we cross multiply, we have x1 times 1, which is really just x1, equals a times cosine theta, or a cosine theta. And now over here we have y1 times 1 is y1, and this is equal to a sine theta when we cross multiply. So now what we could do is we could rename x1 and y1 in terms of cosine theta and sine theta. So we do not want to think of this anymore as x1 and y1. We want to think of these sides of the right triangle as a cosine theta and a sine theta. So now the next step is to label this missing side or line segment DA. Well, if the entire line segment is lowercase b, and this segment here is a cosine theta, then the missing side is b minus a cosine theta. And this could quickly be checked if we were to add a cosine theta plus b minus a cosine theta. The a cosine theta, the minus a cosine theta would cancel out, and we would be right back at that side length B. So now that we have the legs of this other right triangle, keeping in mind on a straight line we have 180 degrees, so that tells us that this is also a right angle, we could apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle. So we have the length of this leg squared plus the length of this leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So we have that A sine theta squared plus b minus a cosine theta squared is equal to c squared. So now what we need to do is we need to expand this left hand side and we'll see how this simplifies. So we have a sine theta squared. This is going to be a we have a squared sine squared theta because we have a sine theta times a sine theta so we have a squared sine squared theta. Plus, and now let's go ahead and write this as b minus a cosine theta times b minus a cosine theta equals c squared. All we do is expand this into two binomials. 
Because now for the next line, let's just go ahead and recopy what we already have. We have a squared sine squared theta plus, and now we have the product of these two terms. We have b times b is b squared. We have b times minus a cosine theta. This is a minus a times b cosine theta. We're just multiplying those two together. Now we have, to multiply these two terms, we have minus a cosine theta times b. So we have a minus ab cosine theta again. And finally, we have a minus a cosine theta times a minus a cosine theta. When we multiply two negatives, we have a positive. So now we can just look at a times a is a squared. Cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. And this is equal to c squared. But now what I want to do is I want to group together terms that are going to simplify. So we want to look at a sine, I'm sorry, a squared sine squared theta, and we want to look at a squared cosine squared theta together. And we also want to look at minus ab cosine theta, minus ab cosine theta. Everything else will eventually fall into place. So now what are we looking at? We're looking at, we have a squared sine squared theta plus a squared cosine squared theta. And now we have this b squared term, which is going to be by itself. And now we have a minus ab cosine theta and a minus ab cosine theta. This is simply minus 2 ab cosine theta. Keep in mind, this is still all equal to c squared. So now notice for the first two terms, they have a common factor of a squared. So we could factor out a squared, and what we're left with is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And now keep in mind what's left. We have plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. And this is still all equal to c squared. But now what did we say before? This Pythagorean identity. We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. This is equal to 1. So really, this is just going to simplify to 1. And we have a squared times 1. Or simply a squared. So this, in some sense, is going to cancel out. So now we have a squared plus b squared minus 2 times ab cosine theta is equal to c squared, which is exactly our law of cosines that we were trying to prove. Okay, well this is going to conclude this proof as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.